Hello, 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 welcome back to the channel. So let's continue our previous video where we were solving a question on calculating the upper bounds on the error using Simpson's rule. So we already covered the first part of this question in the last video. So if you have not watched my previous video, I would highly suggest you to first watch that video in order to get the full context of this question because in this video, we will be moving forward and solving these two questions over here. So now since we already calculated the upper bound on the error using Simpson's rule, it is the time to calculate the Simpson's rule approximation using n equals 4. And whenever you have to calculate the Simpson's rule approximation, you always use this formula, which you would already know as well. So if you're calculating the definite integral of f of x dx from x equals a to x equals b, you use this formula, right? So the formula is delta x by 3 f of x of 0 plus 4 times f of x of 1 plus 2 times f of x of 2 and then you have this alternating 4 and 2 sequence. So it would be 4 of x of 3 plus 2 of f of x of 4 and then you'll keep on going until the second last term which can either be 4 or can either be 2 right because you have an alternating sequence but for the last term you will also end with f of x of n just as the case of f of x of 0. So basically an overview about the Simpson's rule approximation that whenever you have to calculate this approximation, the Simpson's rule approximation specifically, you calculate that approximation using this formula where you calculate delta x by 3 and then multiply it with this expression which is basically you start with f of x of 0 so you'll start with the coefficient 1 and then you'll have alternating sequence of 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2 until the second last term. And then you'll have one coefficient at the end as well. Right? I hope that makes sense. Feel free to comment down if you still have any questions regarding this formula over here. So now we have this formula and in order to calculate these x of 0, x of 1, x of 2 and even delta x, we basically use this formula over here that we already knew from Riemann sums. So we know that delta x is basically b minus a over n, b is your upper endpoint in the definite integral, a is your lower endpoint, and for n, n is usually given in the equations, right? So this is delta x, and for x of i, for x i's, where i can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to n, your basic formula is simply a plus i delta x in this case. So in this question, since our lower endpoint is minus pi, the upper endpoint is pi, our delta x is basically pi minus minus pi upon n is 4. So n is 4 in this case, which would simply be 2 pi by 4 and it would be pi by in this case, right? So now if you'll calculate your x i's, they would simply be x of 0 would be minus pi, x of 1 would be minus pi by 2, you'll basically add pi by 2, x of 2 would be 0, x3 would be pi by 2, and then x4 would be pi in this case. So again, you started from your lower endpoint all the way to your upper endpoint by incrementing your values by delta x, right? So now you have these x i's. In order to calculate the Simpson's rule approximation, we will use this formula over here. So if you'll calculate that, it would simply be delta x by 3. So delta x is pi by 2 in this case. So pi by 2 divided by 3 would be pi by 6. And then you'll have f of x of 0. So f of minus pi plus f of minus pi by 2 plus f of 0 plus f of pi by 2 plus f of pi in this case, right? And f of x is basically cos x in this case, right? The function for which you're calculating the integral, right? And if you'll solve this expression over here, you will get your final answer as 0 in this case, if you'll calculate this expression over here. So now this is the answer to your Simpson's rule approximation of this definite integral 
using n equals 4. The third part is about calculating the absolute error in the Simpson's rule approximation with the same n in this case. So in order to calculate the absolute error, we need to know the actual value of this integral, right? And we know that since the definite integral is basically cos of x dx from minus pi to pi, we know that in order to calculate this value, we'll have to first calculate the integral of cos x, which is sin x. So it would simply be sin x minus pi to pi which would be sine of pi minus sine of minus pi. We know that sine of pi and sine of minus pi are zero, so it would be zero as well. And now, in order to calculate the absolute error, we will subtract the actual value with the approximated value. And if we'll do that, our error in this case, the absolute error in this case would be simply actual minus approximated value in this case, which is simply 0 minus 0. So you will have 0 absolute error in this approximation over here, which means that whatever answer you got using your Simpson's rule approximation is indeed the actual answer to your definite integral over here. So that was a fairly simple question where we had to use the Simpson's rule formula in order to approximate the answer to this definite integral using the given n in the question. And then after we calculated the approximation, we had to calculate the absolute error by just subtracting the actual value with the approximated value that we calculated in the second part of this question, right? So that's it for this video. Feel free to comment down in this video if you have any doubts. Follow the channel in order to get notified about the other videos that I'll be uploading. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. Take care.